I don't know if any of you noticed, but between parts 143 and 144, my stats increased tremendously. Well, that's because I spent all the money I had, which was uh, nearly full, on vitamins so that I could stand more of a chance against Red. And as a result, well, I spent everything I had, but I did manage to raise every stat to the max. Well, well, not to the max, but as much as they can be raised with vitamins. So, in a nutshell, I spent a million dollars on drugs. And taken out of context, that line would be quite incriminating. But, I guess that's not what you expected me to talk about today. Wow! I am still speechless. I still have goosebumps from that ending. What, even one week from now, nobody's gonna remember all the chug of spam that, that destroyed our nerves throughout the weekend. No, everybody is going to remember that incredible ending. Wow, they managed to catch all 493 Pokemon in 71 hours, 58 minutes. You could not Choreograph that, folks! They were two minutes away from failure, and, well, they actually already failed in a way because the last hooray happened on an Elite Four run in Hard Gold and Soul Silver. Oh dear god, I don't have Farfetch'd. Well, I guess I could always come back here later with it, but yeah, as I was saying, uh, they were doing an, an Elite Four run on Soul Silver with the increased levels and all, and uh, whoever was playing Soul Silver lost to Bruno and had a level 32 Bailey that needed evolving. Meganium was the very last Pokemon they needed. So the guy bolted to Victory Road, killed a Graveler, and uh, the Bayleaf evolved two minutes away from the time limit. Well, in a way, you could say they went eight minutes into overtime, but the marathon actually started ten minutes late. So, yeah, that's about it. 71 hours and 58 minutes. And I know what you're thinking. Why wouldn't they have taken care of the starters right at the beginning? Because, well, what happened, in fact, was that uh, whoever was playing Soul Silver had to, um, to catch a lot of junk so that the guy playing Hard Gold could trade everything over to Soul Silver so that Hard Gold could start a new game, pick Chikorita, then send it to Soul Silver so that Soul Silver could grind it to level 32. And that was a near fatal mistake, but thankfully it was only that near fatal. Plus, it gave us that fantastic ending, something that would not have happened had everything gone by the book. And, as I said, this ending will easily make us all forget about all the spam regarding Chugga Conroy, who was invited to play Fire Red. And, yeah, the, the chat was nearly intolerable at times. Not that it was a mistake to invite Chugga Conroy, because he's actually a damn good player from what I've seen. Not only did he dominate Earthbound back in May, but he beat Fire Red and completed his entire checklist in less than 22 hours. That's absolutely incredible. So he's worth some of the praise he gets, but not all. No one could get, could live up to that amount of praise. And how bad it was? It was so bad that one guy even left his phone number for someone, anyone to call him when Chugga would go on commentary, which never happened until after the marathon. But yeah, since it was such a stupid thing to do, I think since I am such a spiteful jerk that a name and shame is in order. So his name was, well, obviously, ChuggaFan9950, and the phone number was... And, uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna do it. I'm actually gonna say the phone number. 214-682-0984. And I checked where, what, 214 was an area code for, and it's in the vicinity of Dallas, which is where the Speed Gamers are based, incidentally, the Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas. 
And while I'm on the subject of Chugga, he got given a wedgie for donations, so yeah, I wish I could figuratively do that for all of his fanboys, preferably off a cliff, a wedgie off a cliff, that would be what those people really need to make them understand that Chugga is not a god. He is a very, very good gamer, but he is still a human being. And while I'm on the subject of spam, and I'm saying that a lot today while I'm on the subject of blah blah blah, I actually got something really unexpected Friday night. I got slow flake spam. I am ashamed, thoroughly ashamed, that it has gotten to this point. And I've, I've always said that when I got popular enough that there would be spam done in my name, that it would be a good time to quit. Well, I think that's what I thought Friday night at least. I thought we had reached that point. But eventually I realized that, well, it would be ridiculous to make everyone pay all the people who really supported me without without putting me too high. Okay, look at the left side of the post. Nope, not this left, not this left either. Not here, not here, no. What am I supposed to do? Oh, well, you know what? Screw it, screw it. I don't need that item. Whatever it is, it's probably just a potion or something like that. So yeah, all those people who supported me, it would be unfair to make them pay for four or five really, really stupid people. But you gotta understand, I was really angry at what had had happened. Those people were trying to suck up to me, they were trying to get shoutouts, which obviously wasn't gonna happen for two reasons. One, I think the whole concept of shoutouts is stupid to begin with, unless it has a purpose. If you give a shoutout because someone asked you to, well then it's, n it's not worth it at all. And second, well I'm obviously not gonna do anything you say because you're just fucking pissing me off! But moving on, since I'm just getting angry for nothing now, one of the things that we had to look forward to for the marathon, as I mentioned in my little preview, was a trailer for all the marathons in 2010. And for those of you who missed all of this for some reason, they are Metroid in March, Mother in May, which really surprised me because they outrageously dominated that series last May with the help of Chugga Conroy, as I had mentioned. And yeah, so I'm really surprised that they're gonna do this again, but I guess the, the, the cult following for uh, Mother it, it, even if it's not so numerous, it's still strong enough that maybe it's worth revisiting every once in a while. And then in June, there will be a week-long Mario Marathon. I'm really curious to see uh, what games are going to be played. Uh, I think it was Brit or Phil who said that everything with Mario in the title, and even some that don't like Luigi's Mansion, would be played. But obviously, it's going to be impossible to do that, because how many games have Mario in the title? Like a hundred or so? So yeah, I, 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 I say we don't take... Uh, what Phil has to say too seriously, I guess we're gonna have to wait uh, later on this spring for the, the actual game list. But I would really be impressed if they managed to visit really a, a ton of games during this marathon. It would be incredible. After that, in August, there will be a an Assassin's Creed slash Prince of Persia marathon. It's not gonna be two separate marathons. It's going to be one marathon, sort of a, a Ubisoft marathon. Uh, so to speak. And in October, I had predicted a Castlevania Marathon for Halloween, and what do we get? A Castlevania Marathon for Halloween! To be fair, this was a fairly easy prediction. And to round things out in uh, uh, just before Christmas next year, there's gonna be, well, there's not gonna be a Pokemon Marathon since this one was actually a success when it came to catching them all. It's going to be Kingdom Hearts instead. Though Brit said that they might revisit Pokemon uh, in a few years when Generation 5 comes out. He said maybe in 2011, but honestly, I'm not expecting Generation 5 to come before 2012 at the earliest, because we still don't know the first thing about Generation 5. They haven't released a single Pokemon so far for Generation 5, so I guess this will have to wait until 2012. 